Let's start this video off with the challenge. What does it mean in a meeting when you see someone doing this? Well, am I thinking of asking a question? Do I disagree with you? Or am I just thinking? The answer is maybe all of the above. A few years ago, a U.S.-based multinational company was negotiating with a potential client in Japan on a large business deal. Back and forth they went. The two sides were left to the issue of pricing. So they decided to formally meet in person in Tokyo. They sat at a long table. The Japanese team on one side and the U.S. reps on the other. They started with a pleasant exchange and then jumped right into the terms of the agreement. Eventually, the U.S. side made an offer, and the Japanese side responded with complete silence. They all had poker face and don't even make eye contact with reps from the U.S. What would you do if you were on the U.S. team sitting in that room? Most Americans would probably start chattering simply to fill the air or try to offer different terms to close the deal. But not this team, and not on this day. Before traveling to Japan, we spent some time discussing the role silence can play in cross-cultural negotiations and how to deal with extended silence. Don't push it, don't jump it, and don't do a thing. Just be patient. So they did. They waited and waited for almost 20 minutes. Eventually, the senior executive from Japan stood up, looked at the highest ranking U.S. executive, extended his hand across the table and said, deal. What just happened? Apparently, the Japanese wanted to wait and see if this was the final offer from the U.S. side. Since the U.S. side didn't say anything for a long time, it must be the best and final offer. It was the preparation beforehand and their disciplined behaviors that saved the day. So how do you deal with silence effectively? I'll share a few tips specifically for Americans working with Asians. Number one, listen with 10 eyes. What do I mean by that? The Chinese character for listen, ting, is made up of symbols of one ear, ten eyes, and one heart. In order to listen and understand the truth, one must observe with your eyes, ear, and your mind. Sometimes what is not said can be more important than what is said. Number two, be patient. Don't force them to speak out. And number three, gently and frequently ask their opinions. Avoid yes or no and tag questions at all times. Avoid direct eye contact. Let them speak in their native language among themselves. And finally, be aware of disagreement. Silence doesn't mean agreement. Actually, it can mean exactly the opposite. Take a close look at their body language, ask probing questions, and then lighten the situation by discussing some of their perceived concerns. You could even take the conversation offline and follow up after the meeting with a more direct line of communication in the less formal settings. They say silence is gold, but the more appropriate cliche is probably silence is worth its weight in gold.